Hi, very good afternoon to all of you uh, present today to attend the uh, you know the, the meeting. Today we are going to start off with a new unit, and this new new unit is going to be business ethics. Um, this is uh, the number for this unit is 5.8, and this is uh, available in the learner management system or Moodle under the unit which is um, under the course sorry, which is the level four extended diploma and management and under also the level five extended diploma and management. Now this is one of the optional units that we're going to be studying and it's quite an interesting unit that we that we look at because we get to see from time to time uh, you know things being discussed in our day-to-day -day operations things like ethics uh, you know things which are to do with social responsibility things to look at how do we conduct manage and you know do the business and that is where the concept of you know ethics comes across. Now, um, the overarching aim of this particular unit is to look at providing you an introduction into the business ethics in particular, and how organizations develop ethics or ethical procedures to be able to conduct business in the market. Now, in this particular unit, we are also going to be looking at um, how businesses make a plan, um, you know, and obviously look at how they operationalize, not essentially getting into the fact that we will look at making a business plan, but we'll be looking at how they operationalize that business plan uh, using the uh, key elements of ethics in terms of trying to manage the business, trying to achieve the goals and objectives and the activities they do to try and achieve the goals and objectives of the business. Now, in this particular unit, uh, this is this has a credit value of 15 and uh, you know the passing criteria of this unit would be achieved or not yet achieved essentially a pass mark now there are four learning outcomes we are looking at covering learning outcome one in today's uh, uh, you know discussion and in this what i'm going to be looking at doing is uh, using a powerpoint presentation uh, with a deck of slides that i put together to try and address the um, you know the first learning outcome which can basically talks about understanding the different ethical perspectives of business so in the meanwhile, if you have any questions uh, during the course of the presentation, feel free to ask me during the chat, chat mode. And then towards the end, um, if you have any further questions that we can discuss before we close the session for today. Um, I'm just going to switch um, uh, you know, the window to um, show you the deck of slides that we're going to use. So this is something which is going to be available on the learner management system just after the session and also, um, you know, uh, I will email a copy of this to you as we, um, you know, finish this session. So let's look at a couple of things. Um, let's look at what do we mean by business ethics. Now, business ethics in general um, could be defined as, you know, the attitude or the ways in which a business is formed, the way it conducts itself, and the kind of image the business actually portrays in doing uh, business dealings or the way it operates in the business environment in general. Now, many businesses you would look at behave in different ways, and this tends to be then depicted as their culture or as the uh, you know culture of the business because um, this kind of influences how the business was formed by the owners or started by the owners, and to a certain extent you see that it has a semblance to how the uh, you know the uh, business actually behaves, operates in the market. Now, when we look at business ethics, they can be described as principles or you know standards which kind of guide the behavior of the people working within the business and this would essentially mean that uh, you know how you conduct yourself and operate in the market uh, would be in a way kind of defining um, you know the image that the business will be having uh, in terms of uh, you know its uh, viability and obviously in terms of its uh, nature when people perceive or deal with you uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or when they do business dealings or have interactions with your business. So here, many businesses look at, you know, building reputation or they look at building a brand. The reason why they look at that is that you want your business or your company to be depicted by certain values and those values are then defined in the overarching mission and vision of the organization. And in some cases, large organizations today have this separately defined as something called business ethics. An example here, which I would do is, um, which I'll give you is basically, which you'll be able to relate, would be the fact that when you look at working, uh, when you choose a company to, you know, look at doing a business. Say, for example, you look at, um, example, you want to get a boiler service in your house, 
or you want to look at maybe getting serviced, uh, you know, something serviced in your office in terms of IT equipment. Sometimes you look out on on uh, on Google, you do a quick search, and what you do is you look at reading the reviews, you look at reading how others have left reviews about the business in terms of the service they've provided, and what then tends to happen is that uh, you take a decision uh, on the basis of the customer reviews and on the basis of what others are saying about the business, and then you choose to kind of you know uh, shortlist that company to call them in and you know give them the uh, you know the, uh, the business to be able to say for example service your IT computers in the office. Now this is basically what what are you doing in the what are you doing in effect? What basically you are looking at doing is you are trying to do a search on the reputation of the business and trying to decide that if the reputation of the business has been good and other customers have liked the service, then that means they are a business that you can trust, they are a business that you can deal with, and in this way what you do is you end up handing over that particular job uh, to them basis the reputation. So this thing is directly linked to the ethics of the organization, and when, when businesses work, operate, transact, offer services, they end up building a reputation in the market, and this reputation is directly related to the ethics. Now, some businesses, when you look at, uh, could be formed as a money-making adventure. That uh, that could mean that they are essentially trading businesses, and they make money by making money for others. So sometimes here, when you look at uh, brokers, when you look at you know mortgage brokers, when you look at, say, for example, investment banking, there you will see that people are actually looking at taking care of somebody else's money in terms of investments to be able to draw benefits or dividends or increase the amount of investment uh, returns on the investment which they are dealing with. So again, here you have to look at ethics because these people have to then transact and show responsible behavior in dealing with somebody else's money when they are trying to make investments uh, which which will in return uh, in turn return more on uh, you know in terms of interest or profitability on the money being invested. Now, ethics can also be defined as, uh, you know, um, clearly a set of moral principles that the business needs to follow. And in some cases, the government does lay down certain rules and regulations, which then are a part and parcel of the ethics in terms of models of the business or the principles which the business have to follow to be able to transact in the market. Now, this is something which, when it is related to regulation, that means it has to be followed. It becomes a law, and then every business has to follow those to be able to bring them into their code of ethics or adapt them into their code of ethics to be able to, you know, uh, uh, operate in the market. Now, if I look at uh, a definition, say, from uh, from a perspective of Crane and Matten, they define business ethics as the study of, you know, business activities and decisions where issues of wrong and right are discussed. So. Because we are looking at focusing on a unit called business ethics, what we are looking at here is that we need to look at how is business business ethics defined. So business ethics are defined as the study of business activities and decisions where the issues of wrong and right are discussed. Now, ethics in the business are quite important, and they all, uh, you know, are related to uh, at some stage adding value, uh, you know, to the mission and vision defined for the organization. And here, the ethics basically are a kind of a barometer which basically um, you know, to a certain extent, talk about the fairness in society and also guide the business operations or activities of a business to ensure that they are able to kind of harmonize and, you know, work uh, in a harmony in, in, in regards to the business environment in general. So what we are looking at is a set of models, a set of, uh, you know, procedures through which people uh, can basically, uh, you know, use those procedures to be able to adhere to operating um, morally within a particular environment and in the context of business, the business environment. Now, with that background, let's look at how, uh, you know, the um, development of ethical approaches has happened over the years uh, when we look at this particular discipline. Now, first things first, when we look at types of business ethics, there are different types of business ethics which can be, you know, um, uh, defined. And we will look at them, uh, you know, very briefly. Now, the first one that we are going to look at is something called moral objectivism. Now, this is described as something where, you know, which basically looks at morally wrong or right in terms of behavioral attitude of a person. So you're looking at the right or wrong decision or right or wrong, basically, from a point of view of attitude or behavior shown by a person. Now, this is where you do not take into account physical facts 
or in this case basically we are uh, kind of you know not looking at the physical aspects of uh, you know the uh, business ethics now moral objectivism is very easy to express and it is something which is either good or bad um, because it has a binary status so it is either good or bad and this is something which we look at you know when we talk about moral objectivism now let's look at something called moral relativism now in moral relativism uh, relativism what we look at is primarily um, taking it a bit step away and basically is what is wrong and right and it depends on the individual belief so here you're not looking at behavior directly for an individual or a person but you're looking at primarily what is right and wrong on the basis of the individual belief of the person and this could vary from one person to the other so if i believe that you know doing this thing is going to be wrong then the other person might still feel that doing this thing could be right because it is dependent on the individual's uh, perspective rather than uh, you know individual's perspective of right and wrong rather than uh, you know what is right and wrong so here in this case uh, you know the general belief is that it is wrong to say that one cult one's culture or belief of the individual is superior to another culture so if i say according to our culture this is what is considered right would be and if i compare it to something else would be wrong to say that in the other culture this would be superior or you know inferior so here we have to base the uh, you know uh, the basis of right and wrong is on the basis of individuals belief uh, rather than uh, you know on the uh, right and wrong which is believed in general within the environment let's look at the next one which is uh, consequentialism now in this case when we look at uh, you know consequentialism here we are looking at talking about uh, theories which have resulted into a consequence of a particular action which could be defined as uh, you know some sort of a moral ju judgment uh, when the action has been taken now the basis of the moral judgment uh, you know could be that the action uh, is taken with the basis of uh, on the basis of some evidence and that evidence must be valid so here when we do talk about consequence consequences in them what we are talking to do is basically describing it as an act which will tell us whether the consequence of that behavior has been morally or ethically right and has that contributed to creating something right or wrong and this judgment uh, is something which is significant is because uh, in this particular uh, ethical uh, you know model what we look at is we look at taking an action on the basis of some sort of an evidence which is present the next one will be geotentology and um, you know here this is primarily on the basis of uh, the greek word which is which means deno denotology and uh, which means that it is the duty um, you know and the logos uh, which means science so geo means duty and logos means science so here it focuses on the moral rules and duties to do things right um, uh, when you are transacting business so primarily in uh, in this case what we look at is in order for us to be able to make a moral choice we have to know what are our moral duties and then we have to adjust our individual actions to those duties that we have to do so here it will be right to say that if we have to obey our duties we are looking at doing things morally right and if we fail to deliver our duties then you are not being able to deliver your uh, you know um, you, you are not able to do things morally so in dio in dio um in dino tautology uh, you know what we are looking at is it is basis the belief that we have to do our duties and those duties follow certain rules and regulations and if this is done in that uh, following those, those rules and regulations then we are basically looking at uh, you know doing things morally right the next one that we look at is principalism and in this case what we are looking at is the ethics are more focused on the medical healthcare so um this will mean that uh, if we have to do things uh, using this particular concept of principalism we will do things uh, and deal with issues relating to healthcare in general as a provider and do things which are primarily going to be right from that point of view so here is this kind of a thing that uh, you know this kind of this concept of principalism is basically seen wherein you take uh, take some services from a person like a like a like like a you know a healthcare provider or a, or doctors when we look at they have to do things morally right they have to take uh, our decisions on the basis of principles principles and when they look at you know taking decisions on the basis of principles what they are looking at is they are primarily looking at what is considered to be uh, right 
or righteous to be able to do and that is where you know they they believe that the, those are the guiding moral principles which uh, you know have to be followed to be able to you know uh, do certain actions now when we look at some of these types of business ethics what can be drawn uh, you know from a point of view of conclusion now so if you look at all the principles they talk about morals they all talk about you know either individual uh, morals they they talk about you know roles and responsibilities they talk about you know behavioral attitude of a person and in some cases when we talk about you know uh, deontology when we are looking at the morals related to duties and uh, you know um, uh, your duties and they then helping you to decide what is the right and wrong uh you know you have to do when you are conducting business so in general when we look at ethics is all about moral principles and they basically guide you from doing right from wrong from an aspect when we look at uh you know doing something in terms of business activities so from an example here would be that if you are trying to sell a good uh, or sell goods which are being manufactured at low wages in developing countries then it is considered an unethical practice because what you are trying to do is basically not pay the fair wages to people who are actually working on uh, producing those goods and then trying to profit from uh, those uh, practices uh, by selling those goods in other countries wherein you know uh, pricing or trying to hit a particular price would be an issue an example here would be that we have seen time and again in the news is the example of primark so the companies like like hlm primark you know uh, next wherein they are outsourcing manufacturing into countries like bangladesh vietnam and some of the other developing countries wherein the cost of labor is quite cheap and because of the outsourcing they are able to get some of the material cheaply manufactured but again the conditions in which the workers actually work are 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 not uh, you know considered uh, uh, you know uh, cordial and because of which uh, the companies are under pressure to be able to give a minimum wage uh, you know uh, health and safety have to be looked at because there have been time and again various disasters in which people have lost their lives and it then promotes the unethical uh, you know uh, working of these companies in locations wherein uh, they are trying to save on cost by outsourcing the work to developing countries where the wages are low and the conditions of working are appalling so in conclusion ethics are all about talking about principles of uh, doing things right and they kind of give you guidelines to uh, you know decipher what is right from wrong and then act accordingly to conduct the activities of your business so that they are able to engage in something which is lawful and it is something which is truthful and also is within the remits of something called uh, you know working morally now let's look at going into the second part to understand you know what is the difference between absolute and relative you know ethics now when we talk about ethics you know what then the various concepts that we've discussed the ethical theories actually you know depend on what is right from wrong and in the end they look at you know providing you some guidance to be able to take some action now doing what is right is obviously obeying your duties but sometimes you will see that the rules have to be created to guide you to do these things when you are doing it from a business perspective so when we look at the concept of ethical behavior uh in in of people doing businesses you know uh, in in the society what we tend to look at is that we have to have some uh, absolute and relative concepts which relate to ethics uh, so that you know uh, people when they look at using these as guidance or as some sort of guiding principles they are then able to relate these uh, you know their individual beliefs to either the absolute side of ethics or or towards the relative side of ethics now some beliefs that we look at are in existence because uh, you know because of religion and some of them uh, would some people might not believe these because uh, they do not believe in that particular uh, you know religion or have those common beliefs so in some cases what you look at is the ethical beliefs when we look at uh, from a point of view of our culture society would also be shaped up by our religion and the background that we come from so in some cases what we have to do is now look at the concept of absolute ethics and relative ethics so when we look at you know things which are coming across from an absolute ethics point of view here what we tend to do is we will tend to look at that the absolute uh, ethics will conform to something which are beliefs that there are there is only one truth and the code of conduct which people have to generally follow would be the fact that they have to kind of you know uh, uh 
uh, follow and everyone follows the same and obeys the same. So that means it's absolute. An example of here uh, that would be the, is that when you're trying to when you drive a car and you're on the road, you're following absolute ethics because if there's a traffic light that you hit and it is red, everybody stops and everybody has to follow that code of conduct. There is no left or right or there is no deviation from that. Now, when we look at relative ethics, what we are looking at is here the belief uh, of uh, relative ethics is actually based on the fact that there is a single there's only one single moral standard which applies to all human beings. Now, in some cases, when you look at this, the, here, um, you know, the moral ideas, uh, in particular, when we look at, um, in, in particular, when we look at, uh, with regards to human beings, would be that they differ from one person to the other, and from one part of the world to the other part of the world. So here, the morals might change. And here, I would give you an example that sometimes when you look at meeting people, uh, and we look at the example of relative ethics, would be that when you hand over your business card, in, in, in the Far East, in countries like Korea and Japan, as a mark of respect, what you do is you always hold your business card in both hands and then you give it to the other person by showing a bit of gesture and, uh, you know, and that is uh, showing respect. But if I look at that same, uh, you know, uh, approach of handing over a business card in the developed countries in the Western world, you normally hand over your card with one hand and then you shake your hand uh, with the other person or, you know, in some cases, you know, this is also seen as um, different from uh, the aspect of how it is done in one side of the world to how it is done in the Western side of the world. So sometimes you have to look at the concept of absolute and relative ethics. And here, the idea of absolute and relative ethics is to do with the belief of the culture, uh, the background, in some cases, the religion and how your bringing has been to follow those morals uh, over the years. Uh, in terms of, you know, different ethnic groups and also the backgrounds from a point of view of your culture and religion in the society. Now, let's look at comparing the two. How do we compare absolute and relative ethics? Now, the difference between the two is, uh, you know, highlighted on the slide. Now, absolute ethics, as I mentioned earlier, is a general belief that there is a universal moral standard. And there is a, there is a different, dif uh, you know, difference between what is right and wrong. In the relative ethics, what we're looking at is that there is no universal moral standard. So, you know, if you follow the traffic rules, for example, in the UK, uh, a red traffic light, red green, uh, you know, amber system is pretty much the same and the rules are absolutely understood the same of any way that you go in the world. But when I look at relative ethics, the morals uh, are not universal. So it could be different, differing on the basis of culture, religion, society that you come from. And here, uh, sometimes what you have to look, sometimes what you look at is that there is no difference between uh, what is right and what is wrong, because it is the way in which they are interpreted. So this is a key difference between the two types of ethics when we look at, and it is something which is, uh, you know, uh, good to know that, uh, and sometimes when, when, when companies firm up their, uh, you know, business ethics, they follow something called absolute ethics in the head office, but sometimes when you look at the terms like go global, go local, sometimes these companies have to adapt their, you know, corporate side of things or the head office side of things into, uh, you know, different geographies or countries in which they operate. And that is where they tend to kind of then follow sometimes what is called the relative ethics so that the interpretation of the, uh, you know, ethics is done to meet the market requirements in a particular geography or a country. Now, what are the ethical issues that can affect the operational activities of the business? Now, there are, uh, when we say the ethical activities of the business, you know, um, uh, can affect the business or, you know, business activities uh, is, is because, you know, what we see is that the businesses today operate in different countries, in different types of environment, and they are, they are faced with different challenges and obviously different type of factors which impact them. So when we look at that, the business ethics of an organization you know, uh, to follow them and to implement them becomes the responsibility of the management or the person in the leadership position. It could be the CEO, it could be the management or the board of the organization, and that is what regulates why these activities uh, which the businesses perform have to then conform to the, uh, you know, ethical issues uh, or the law and legislation which is laid out in that particular geography or, you know, particular country. And even you know, kind of study this from a point of view of, you know, certain laws and regulation which has been put in place, which all business activities have, uh, of, uh, you know, of businesses have to conform with. So let's look at 
uh, when we when we talk about you know the management of business ethics in an organization, what all does do they constitute, and where all do they need to be followed? So when we look at say for example employment law, when we look at equal opportunities during recruitment and selection, when we look at you know employment regulation, when we look at dealing with workforce diversity, these are places where management uh, you know has to follow. Uh, and define what is called the business ethics for their organization. Now, when we talk about, say, employment law, here we are talking about, you know, this is to do with the uh, employment of employees with minimum wages, and the workers will be paid on time, the number of hours they work have to be recorded, and to a certain extent here we are talking about the terms and conditions which are laid down in their contract, which the organizations have to agree and obey this is the legislation which has been set by the government in that country. So when we look at the UK, the employment law regulates that you know the part-time work or full-time work. These are the number of hours you have. The minimum wage which has been uh, you know defined by the government. And in some cases, the workers when they work on these uh, minimum wages, you know they also need to have some terms and conditions or con laid down in their contract, which allows them to have some rights. And these rights, both on the employer and employee side, allow the organizations to, you know, look at, uh, at adapting the legislation into their policies and then provide a bit of structure in the organization. So if you have any grievances, for example, if you want to leave the organization or you, if, you're, if, you're looking at, if you're looking at raising an issue with the management, there are procedures and policies which are set through which you can actually take this up. Now, if, for example, I feel that I have not been promoted or I have not been given a raise, then I can raise this as an issue internally. And if I do feel that uh, my particular, uh, you know, complaint is, is, has not been dealt with accurately, then I can go across to ACAS, you know, the arbitration service, which basically then helps me, uh, you know, uh, take this up with my employer. Now, in some cases, some organizations are able to provide, say, for example, flexible working hours or working conditions. And they sometimes then, you know, treat the organizations, uh, treat their employees in a way wherein they are able to then develop loyalty towards the organization. So in this case, when you look at companies like Facebook, Microsoft, you know, some of the um, millennial companies in particular, when you look at Uber, where they've issued zero hour, zero hour contracts, which have to conform to the employment law laid by the UK government in, 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 in this particular sector. So here, when you look at things like public liability, when you look at insurance, you know, so that the employers are, employment law actually provides that guidance to be able to ensure that, you know, the employer is responsible for the health and safety of the employee within the organization or the premises that they work. And they need to be able to provide a clean, healthy and safe premises where the uh, employees are able to work. In some cases, if you work within factories or production utilities, then, you know, the employer is tasked with also providing you training so that you are able to not just uh, understand how to operate the equipment, but in the context of health and safety, you have, uh, you, they also ensure with the help of training that they are not putting lives at risk or, you know, um, ensuring that the, uh, you know, the implication of, uh, you know, risks and danger at work can be minimized because the employees are made aware of it by using training. So, Legislation in terms of, you know, uh, ethical issues is important, but when we look at implementing that, we are looking at employment law as one of the, uh, you know, key things in which the organization has to follow what has been laid out, uh, you know, as, as one of the requirements, you know, uh, in, in this case for organizations. Um, you know, we look at a lot of examples here. So um, in terms of, you know, the second one that we will look at is equal opportunity. Now, when we look at equal opportunity, here we are talking about, you know, the employer being able to provide you an opportunity to, uh, you know, progress, the, uh, you know, raise uh, in your career or your job, uh, in your wages. And this has to be done without discrimination of age, color, sex, or, you know, um, uh, orientation within the organization. So this is where the ethics also come into place is that the government has defined uh, equality, uh, you know, uh, an equal opportunity. Most organizations have, uh, you know, Act, Equality Act of, 20, uh, I think, 2010. But when we look at, you know, most organizations, they have something called, uh, you know, an equality and diversity policy and in which they basically pledge that they are going to provide equal opportunities to all people working within the organization without any discrimination to age, color, sex, or orientation of the of the person. And this then looks at, you know, providing uh, an equal uh, kind of a platform to all employees to prosper within the organization. Now, 
typical example of this would be that sometimes you get to see that there is a bias which happens when uh, employees are looking at hiring, uh, you know, people for certain jobs or vacancies. Like if you're hiring, uh, say, for example, uh, somebody for the receptionist duties in the organization, businesses tend to prefer that they want to hire a female employee uh, or have a female primarily work at that position. But that means if they advertise it that way, then they are doing, uh, you know, they are not providing an equal opportunity. They are doing a bit of, they are, they are discriminating to a certain extent that they are not going to be accepting application from male employees or male members of the, you know, when the job is advertised. So here the rules and regulations kind of have, uh, have to work in such a way that there is no discrimination and equal opportunities are provided, you know, when the organization is actually look, looking at recruiting uh, or, you know, selecting somebody for a particular job role in the organization. Now, then we look at, you know, employment regulation. Now, in general, there are laws which, uh, you know, uh, are available um, and, you know, basically uh, governing the working of, you know, the employees within an organization. So in this case, when you look at, you know, contracts, uh, when you when you work in a company and you have a, you work in a particular job role, you have a contract which is given to you and that contract basically has the terms and conditions which primarily are provided in terms of your employment uh, with that organization. Sometimes you will get to see that there are issues which uh, come up and then companies, uh, you know, for example, if they are going, uh, say, for example, a company's closing operations, then they have to be fair in terms of, you know, ensuring that um, the employer is able to pay the reasonable amount of, you know, salary, wage, to the employees uh, when the business is closing. So here you look at, there are laws which have been put in place that if you work within an organization uh, as an employee for more than two years, and if the employee uh, employer is to go into administration, then the employer is bound to pay you two weeks of pay for every year that you work within the organization. And that comes across from the statutory pay, which uh, even if the company goes into administration. So some of these issues related to employment regulation have to be followed and they have to be built into the code of conduct or the ethics of the organization when, when you know, they are, uh, when they are, you know, obviously uh, dealing with, uh, you know, employees and employees have some rights and responsibilities with regards to, you know, um, uh, working in the organization. So here, a lot of organizations uh, need to be aware of their rights and duties that they have towards the employees and they have to, you know, kind of discharge those duties in line with the employment regulation which has been set, you know, uh, for a particular country. And when we look at, in particular, the UK, you will see that the employment legislation in particular uh, in the UK, you know, there's a, uh, there is a particular act. So all these, uh, you know, in terms of, um, um, you know, when we look at um, the main things that we are studying in terms of the ethics, I'm going to send you a bit of a handout because when we look at the Employment Act of uh, 2008, it basically looks at, you know, um, the uh, the case of, you know, minimum statutory disciplinary and grievance procedures which the organizations have to develop because this then helps them to, uh, you know, deal with disciplinary problems or grievances uh, which which could be confrontal, uh, you know, from an employee-employer perspective. And that's where the Employment Act of 2008 actually comes into place. And this Employment Act makes a procedure for the resolution of employment disputes which can arise, uh, you know, between the employer and employee. And that is why it is vital to have the discharge of this particular act uh, within the code of ethics of the organization. Last but not the least, let's look at, you know, a bit of diversity. So when we talk about, uh, you know, um, equal opportunity, when we talk about people, different type of people working from different, you know, origins within the organization, you will see a lot of organizations in the UK in particular, when they have workers working from abroad, which is outside the EU, they have to have, you know, visas to be put in place. Uh, work working visas to be put in place so that they are conforming with the legislation on one side. But on the other side, what they have to do is some organizations sometimes have to employ workers from outside the EU because they, they, they are not able to find the relevant talent uh, from within the same market. And in those cases, they have to then look at employing people, you know, from uh, from outside the EU. So here the employers actually need to understand that these people, if they come from different backgrounds and different cultures, then they, they, the employers would create, you know, conducive conditions wherein there is no discrimination or bias in any form uh, 
where when these employees are working within the organization. So they have to provide a very conducive and safe environment at all times to ensure that there is no discrimination which happens when you have workers uh, working within a particular business uh, doing certain number of activities or types of activities and that involves workforce diversity. Now, in some cases, what you will also see is when employees do not treat all employees in the same way and then they do not give equal opportunities uh, because of, uh, you know, maybe, for example, special needs or disabilities or because of the different beliefs and the way they have come across in terms of their upbringing. And I say the culture, then here the employer is actually bound to provide conducive, uh, you know, environment to the employees uh, which work within the organization so that the organization is able to, you know, provide equal opportunities, not discriminate, and at the same point in time, you know, define this clearly within the ethical codes of, uh, you know, the ethics of the, the code of ethics of the organization, so that it is absolutely clear that all employees are treated fairly and uh, and are provided the same, uh, you know, uh, let's put it this way, deliverables as any other employee within the organization. So ethical considerations, you know, when sometimes we look at, uh, you know, they help the business to achieve the aims and objectives which has been set. And they are quite important for businesses because businesses, uh, if they have these ethical codes of practices or a code of ethics, then it helps them to become profitable. It helps them to meet the expectation of the stakeholders. And in some cases, you know, when we look at if they are not followed, then you see a backlash or you see some sort of, you know, uh, 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 sanctions from the government, you know, when when they kind of do not follow or conform to these ethical codes of practice. Um, and that is where, you know, the reputation of the business or the, uh, you know, brand of the business can get damaged. Now, to a certain extent, you know, this is quite clear is that if a business to consider business ethics, then they need to focus on the ethical considerations uh, you know, because businesses are formed primarily to make to look at making profits. But if they are not making profit, not meeting the you know kind of expectation of the stakeholders, then obviously the businesses do not survive. But when they do activities to generate these profits, they they do the activities to generate you know benefits for their stakeholders or you know uh, you know investment in return in investment for the stakeholders. They have to do this. All, all, all the way by conforming to you know, some of the ethical codes of practice which have been set, and these then are a combination of something which is to do with legislation, it is which has been set in stone as an act or regulation by the government, and to a certain extent, the code of ethics which the organisation has formed in order to, uh, you know, kind of uh, direct and execute their responsibilities when when they do the uh, you know business activities in a particular geography area. So with this, what we are going to do is today, uh, you know, look at just the learning outcome one, which basically talks about understanding the different ethical practices and perspectives, uh, you know, from a business standpoint of view. And what we've done in general is we've covered uh, the background of, uh, you know, the ethical approaches. We've looked at a bit of contrasting and comparison between the absolute and relative ethics and how they are formed and what, what they conform to, uh, you know, prescribe. And last but not the least, we've looked at some of the ethical issues which the business sector, the uh, business operational activities have to, you know, conform to when they are transacting or, you know, doing business in a particular geography. And these are the various things that we looked at, which is the employment law, the equal opportunity, the regulation and the diversity in terms of the workforce. Now, uh, if you don't have any questions, then what I would try and do is I will end the session here uh, for now and then uh, send you a bit of a handout for you to read uh, to kind of develop a bit of deeper understanding into uh, you know, the concepts of uh, the ethics and the ethical perspectives and uh, you know, uh, substantiate that with a bit of example to um, you know, understand the learning outcome one. And then I will catch up with you in the next session, uh, which I think is uh, on Thursday, if I'm correct, uh, the next session on this particular unit that we are looking at doing uh, is primarily going to be on um, on Thursday, and that is in the uh, just just double checking. And, uh, no, uh, so we we have one session which is slated for tomorrow, uh, the same time, and that's that's where I'm going to catch up with you uh, with regards to that. And in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, please feel free to send drop me an email. 
or uh, you know um, uh, raise that to the forum. Thanks very much for joining. Take care and bye for now.